Hello aviators, welcome to my instrument rating video series. I'm Ty Jones, your error nerd, bringing you honest experience, reviews, training tips that will help you aviate, navigate, and communicate. Now, if you're new here, the purpose of this video series is to bring you free, in-depth instrument ground school training for you instrument pilots. This is the same exact training and instructions that I normally give to my students. And if you're one of my students that are watching, yes, you can use this as a review because this is literally the same exact instructions that I give in the same exact way. Um, and it has been proven to work. So without further ado, let's jump right into the training. Hello and welcome back instrument pilots to session number three. Now in this ground school training, I'm gonna be talking about the airspeed types and the altitude types. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get jump right into it. I'm gonna start with the airspeed types first and then with that, cause these are a little bit simpler to explain and then I'm gonna go into the altitude types. So starting out with airspeed. Indicated, let me get my marker here. Indicated is literally what it says. It's, it's, it's what your instrument is actually indicating. So if your indicator, is, if your airspeed indicator is indicating 60 knots, well then guess what your indicated airspeed is? 60 knots. So that's literally what indicated is. Now, calibrated, uh, for the Cessnas of slower aircraft, the calibrated and indicated don't really have that much differences uh, because we don't really go that fast in order to have this to, uh, to have this much difference. But what is it really? So let's say we're going 90 knots and I'm going to draw a pitot tube. There's a little drain hole right here. Here's our pitot tube and let's say we're going through the air at 90 knots. So it's going to tell that we're going 90 knots by having 90 knots worth of air molecules being shoved in there and then of course it's going to expand the aneroid away for inside the airspeed indicator and then that's how it's going to work. If you uh, if you want to know how the how the six pack works and a little bit more in depth information of how the airspeed indicator works, as long as, as well as the rest of the six pack, or hit this link above and it's to episode two where I talk about how these six pack instruments uh, work and it explains how all of the instruments work within the six pack in episode two. So go ahead and check that out if you haven't already. Um, so going back to this, so this is 90 knots with a bear going in here. So 90 knots. It's going to indicate 90 knots and it's calibrated for 90 knots. However, now what happens when we add a little bit of angle of attack in here? So we have well, before, let, let's say, let's say, okay, so here's our pitot tube opening right here. We have 90 knots right here. Okay. Now let's go ahead and add some angle of attack. Now we have a lot more of this error hitting going over and going around it. So we're only going to be getting not as much air molecules inside of the pitot, uh, of the pitot tube because it's more at, a, more at an angle. If I'm going directly at you, yes, I'm getting all of the air molecules. But however, if I'm going up a little bit, still going in the same direction, I'm not getting that much uh, air molecules. So that's why your airspeed indicator might drop a little bit more um, than what you're actually going through. So just think of it as, indicated airspeed corrected for instrumentation errors for designing errors from the aircraft and the manufacturers uh, where the pitot tube is located at uh, when you're going to angle of attack or if you're not going to angle of attack or anything like that so and then you then you can account for angle of incidence and all that good stuff but we'll get into that in another video most likely i'll probably have an aerodynamics video when i go into um, commercial um, depending on how uh, you guys like the instrument series i'll probably do a commercial series as well um, so that is calibrated right there let me get my eraser all right true airspeed true airspeed is the airspeed that you're actually going through the air how fast are the clouds actually passing you when you're going through the air regardless regardless of what your airspeed indicator is reading you might actually be able to be going faster than what your what your airspeed indicator is actually indicating so with that being said I'm going to go to this, uh, go to my little column here, um, and this may be very familiar to those who've seen my episode two. Uh, this is representing the air density. So right here, I got this blue line right here. This is representing the standard datum plane. So this is 299 or 2, 15 degrees Celsius. As we go up a thousand feet, it's going to drop two degrees and go up and go up and then we lose a we lose an inch of mercury as we go up every thousand feet of altitude. And we'll go a little bit more of that when we go into the altitude. But for now, just understand that with the higher we go, the less air molecules that are gonna be up there. So the less the pitot, 
the pedal static, or I'm sorry, excuse me, the pedal port is going to be getting less air molecules. So what that's going to be indicating in the cockpit is you're going actually a little bit lower than what you're actually really going. Why? Because once you're going higher, you don't have all these air molecules Oh, I'm pulling you back. It's called parasitic drag. You don't have that much parasitic drag up there because you have less air molecules. So you're actually, you're actually able to travel a little bit faster through the air, and that is what true altitude uh, is. Now going over the ground speed. Ground speed is literally the easiest to explain. It's the speed at which you're going over the ground. If you look over the ground, it's like, hey, this is how fast I'm going over the ground. Uh, so that's ground speed Mach. I'm pretty sure many of you have heard of what Mach is. So what Mach is, is the speed of sound. So Mach 1 would be the speed of sound at the proper temperature. Now Mach speed does change according to temperature. So Mach 1 is the, the speed of sound. Mach 2 would be the twice the speed of sound. And so on and so forth. The OS airspeed is the O airspeed. I'm going too fast or I'm going too slow or I'm about to stall. I need to add power. Um, so that is what this speed, and I also like to have that uh, included. So stay away from this speed. Okay, so I'm moving along to altitude. So we just like how we went over airspeed indicated, we also have a indicated uh, altitude, and that is exactly what it says, what your altimeter is indicating, right? Now we have a pressure altitude. This is a little bit different from our airspeed that we went over earlier. So pressure altitude is now we're really going to be starting to dive into this right here. Uh, so pressure altitude at, is the altitude above the standard datum plane. What is the standard datum plane? This right here. Let's say if it's on a perfectly standard day on 299 or 2 inches of mercury and the temperature is 15 degrees Celsius at sea level, that is the standard datum plane right here. Now, let's say if we have a low pressure or a high pressure system move in, we're not going to be right here. We might, if a high pressure system move in, well, then guess what? We might actually be down here a little bit. Uh, or if a low pressure system moved in, if it's really hot and humid, then hey, our, our pressure system is going to be actually up here. Now, that's only a standard day on, on, a, on a correction. That's only on a standard uh, uh, temperature, right? So now let's say what happens if the temperature changes. Let's say if it is. 299 or 2. However, the temperature is not 15. It's a super hot day. It's like 33 degrees Celsius. Is it really going to perform as if it's right here? We may be at 299 or 2. However, the air molecules are not going to be like this. The air molecules are going to be more going from here to this. It's going to be a lot more spread out. So what the density altitude is, is pressure altitude corrected for non-standard temperatures. So as I said, let's say it is 30.92, but it's not 17. It's actually maybe 20 or 15 or whatnot. So your density altitude, pressure altitude corrected for non-standard temperatures, and most importantly, your density altitude is going to be the altitude of how your aircraft is going to be performed. What altitude does your aircraft think that it's at, that it feels like it's at? If you were to stick your hand out the window at 10,000 feet, you probably wouldn't feel a lot of air molecules. However, if you were to go the same speed at 1,000 feet, you're probably going to feel a lot more resistance, a lot more parasitic drag because of the air molecules. So that's literally the same thing of what the aircraft feels, and especially the wings. The more dense the, more dense the air is, the more uh, better your aircraft is going to be, going to perform. The less dense the less density in the air, the less aircraft, uh, the less performance you're going to get out of your aircraft. Also, to better understand the now, so we went over the hot and the cold. Now let's go over the pressure. So right here we got hot. Hot is going to represent the low pressure, right? So we got low pressure right there, and then on the cold we have high pressure. High pressure, I don't know if you can read that, but anyway, that's what that says, high. <laughs> all right, so high pressure always wants to go to the low pressure, all the time, every time, all the time. So I use this analogy to try to help explain that, what that really means. I know we're trying, I know we're getting into the weather a little bit, but I kind of want, really want you to understand this before we move forward in the, uh, in the, in the altitudes. So we have high pressure here. So imagine this representing a column filled with water, so you got a lot of water over here, and you got less water over here, and it's being separated by this little door right here. Now, what is going to naturally happen if I remove this door? Let's say I remove this right here. What's going to happen? Obviously, it's going to want to equalize, and all this 
high pressure, this high weighted water, there's more weight on this side, is gonna automatically go right over here to try to equalize. The low pressure is not gonna go this way. High pressure is always, always, always gonna go toward the low pressure. Now I use this analogy all the time. So let's say you're in a cold room and this is literally how the air molecules are going to be working. Now you have your cold temperatures and you get your warmer temperatures. Now just like we are, if it's in a really cold environment, and we're surrounded by a bunch of people. We're gonna be like, hey, you know, survival of the fittest. Hey, let's huddle up. We, we need to share this body heat. Let's all come closer together and let's share this body heat because we gotta survive. You know, one, one, one team here. Let's, let's all survive so we can all get together and stay warm from everybody else's body heat, right? And we can only get that by getting really close to each other. So that's, the air molecules are literally reacting the same exact way. Now, vice versa, if it's hot outside, or if it's really hot, then the air molecules, just like human, just like us, we're gonna be like, you know what, you stink, it's hot, get away from me, I, it, it's too hot out right now, Let's, I need my space. Air molecules are gonna be the same exact way. So, with that being said, hot, you have a less air molecule, so the air molecules are gonna be spread out a lot more, so what that's gonna represent is a lower air pressure, because there's no, a lot of air molecules compressing, it's gonna be really, really, really low. So on this day, you can probably expect the air density altitude to be like maybe 289 or two or whatever, or I'm sorry, the pressure altitude is gonna, gonna be really high. So you can expect your air performance on, for this a hot day, your air performance is gonna be really poor because wings need a lot of air molecules to, in order to fly, right? So if you have only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or whatever air molecules, then guess what? Your wing is only gonna get that much air molecules and that way, that means the air, your wing's not gonna be able to form as well. Now let's go to a cold day or a higher pressure system. We got a high pressure system because look at all the molecules. We got a lot higher number of air molecules per square inch. Let's just say this is this is per square inch. So our wing performance is gonna be a lot better on a cold day. So that being said, though, this is literally how the uh, molecules work, if, whether it's hot versus cold. Uh, true altitude is the, is the altitude above mean sea level. So if you have a, let's say here's Here's your mean sea level right here, and here is a mountain, and you're flying right here. You're about 10 feet over the mountain, so I hope you pull up. But your true altitude may be a thousand because yours, here's the sea level way down here, and you're flying way up here. So there's a difference between uh, mean sea, uh, I'm sorry, true altitude and absolute. Now, absolute is exactly what I was just mentioning earlier. Absolute altitude is literally AGL. That's the easiest way to remember. A for absolute, A for AGL. This is the altitude above the ground that you're, that you're flying over. And of course, the OS, the O altitude is the same as that thing. If you're too low or you're, you're flying an instrument and you're flying in, in, in an MAA, like, oh shoot, maybe I should start to start to, start to descend or I'm about to bust my minimums. Maybe I should, oh, so please, again, just like I mentioned over here, stay away from these uh, two uh, air speeds and altitudes. Another thing that I did want to mention really quick is there's a lot of confusion on uh, humidity and the, what, how humidity affects. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of students that are confusing that if, there's, if the air is really humid, the air is gonna be more dense, right? Uh, but that's actually not the case, and I'm gonna explain it here shortly. So let's say this is a column of air, and the blue is representing, actually no, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. The black is representing an air molecule. So we have an air molecule here, Again, this is one square inch per at sea level. So we have nine air molecules, cool, per square inch. So this is really dense. This is as dense as you can get. This is all the air molecules you can fit in one square inch. Now, what happens when the air is humid? Obviously, our aircraft is gonna, be, is gonna perform well because in each inch we have nine air molecules per square inch. Yay, again, this is just an example. What happens when we have humidity in there? Well, it has to fit somewhere, right? So, well, we can't fit it here, so let's have a, we got a, uh, it's humid, oh, shoot. It's uh, humid. Ah, uh, as you can see what's happening here, it's taking away those air molecules. So is the air as dense anymore because of the humid? No. It's actually taking away density. So the more the, the more humid it is, the less air molecules, 
that we have in the air, right? So before we had nine, now we only have four. So is the aircraft performance gonna be increasing or is, gonna, is, is it going to decrease? Obviously it's going to decrease. And with that being said, it's going to simulate this right here. It's gonna simulate a uh, very low pressure. So you got your high pressure over here and you got your low pressure over here. So high humidity means low aircraft performance. Okay, instrument pilots, so I hope that really helped you on the understanding of the different airspeed and altitude types. If there's something I missed or is there something that you want me to explain a little bit more, just please put those comments or questions in the comments below and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. The next video, stand by for that one, is going to be talking more about the instrument pilot privileges, the limitations, what we can do, what we can't do. So stay tuned for that for the next, uh, for the next session. Uh, until then, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next session. But until then, keep flying, keep learning, and always have fun. I'll see you guys in the next video.